Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to automatically create stream flow lines, how to auto delineate the gross drainage area from a single point, creating a watershed, and how to automatically determine stream order using the Staller method. Let's get into it. Before we get started, I would like to make the suggestion that if you mosaic rasters together or clip a raster and you're using that, run calculate statistics on it first, and then also run build pyramid. This will make sure that your raster is ready to work with. All right, to follow along with these hydrology tools, you're going to need to go into Analysis, Raster Functions, open up the window, and then you're also going to have to open up your Geoprocessing tab if you don't have that as well. Back to Raster Functions, you can head down to the Hydrology tab, and the first thing we're going to need to do is need to use Fill. What Fill is going to do is it's going to fill in any depressions. A depression or a sink is an area where everywhere around it is uphill. Fill is going to fill in that depression until it can spill over. Let's take our elevation model, don't set a Z limit, and let's create a new layer. We can now see that this low area has been filled in. That brings us to our next tool in raster functions, and that's flow direction. Select your fill DEM and hit create new layer. So now that our fill direction is complete, we can see that each pixel is coded with a direction. One means that the water is going to flow east one pixel, two means that it'll flow southeast one pixel, and so forth. But we can really see is better if we use the next tool, flow accumulation. Let's use our flow direction raster and let's create a new layer. All right, so I forgot to hit record um, and went through the next couple steps. Um, I also switched locations. I switched over to the Buffalo Creek LiDAR because that's where I did my water retention video. And I realized and that's the reason I did this video was to pair with that. So after flow accumulation ran, what I ended up with was a mostly black raster. That's because most pixels don't have a ton of other pixels that feed into them. But then they slowly make their way into more major water runs and they slowly build up until they get to the main outlet. And by the time they're at this end, we have about 86 million pixels flowing to this point right here. After that, we used CON, the spatial analyst tool. We input the flow accumulation raster where we wanted the value to be greater than 10,000. And what this does is it takes the flow accumulation raster and anywhere that there's at least 10,000 pixels contributing to that pixel, it'll set the value to one or whatever you want to put in there. This means you're going to end up with a network of small streams. If you're doing this to figure out stream order, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in 1 million. That's 1,000 by 1,000 square meters or one square kilometer of contributing area. You're then going to select the save location and hit run. After that runs, you're going to head back over to raster functions and you're going to use stream link. You're just going to put in the con raster and the flow direction raster and then hit create new layer. Finally, you're going to use the stream to feature geo processing tool. You're going to input the stream link. You're going to input flow direction and then you're going to pick where you want to save it. And that'll be pretty much your final shape. I also uncheck simplify polylines and then hit run. And with that complete, we now have all of our stream features. Zooming in, we can see how the water flows across the landscape. And if we compare it to our DEM, which it is based off, you'll see it has all the flow paths. One thing I should notice is if you don't have hydro conditioned LiDAR, it won't know where the culverts are. Hydro conditioning will be my next video, and we'll get into how to do that. For instance, there would be a culvert right here, and it would flow straight. Now, to automatically delineate watersheds, the next thing we're going to need to do is create a new shapefile. Head to your geo database, create a new feature class. This will be a point feature class. I'm going to add a name text field just so that I can reference it to different areas. Hit finish. Let's create some points on the landscape. This was an area I was interested in, so I'm going to put one here right on the line. Let's throw a couple more across the landscape. All right, I put down some points across the landscape. The next tool we're going to use in geoprocessing is snap pour point. So we're going to put on our point feature. You can use object ideas of the field, the accumulation raster. And to make sure our points snap to the low area, let's just put a snap distance of five. Let's hit run. And the next tool we're gonna to use is watershed. We need the flow direction, the snap for point data, watershed, snap for point, and then hit run. All right, so watershed is completed. And what you can now see is you've got the air contributing area that goes to each point. All the green goes to this point, this green goes to this point, which goes to this point which eventually flows all the way down to this point. These watersheds are now delineated. Now there's one thing I want to loop back to, and that's stream order. Hey everyone. So I had some trouble running the stream order. Um, finally got it to work a couple days later. I'm gonna kind of go over the issues that I had. So my first attempts were to do all of the stream order through raster function. So that's the fill, flow direction, flow accumulation. I used con and geoprocessing then stream length, then stream order. Stream order would just run for hours and hours. I left it overnight and it still didn't complete. It didn't show any signs of doing anything. So then I tried to run stream order through geoprocessing. 
when I was using the raster function version of flow direction, it was telling me that the raster had to be an integer. While the raster function flow direction was definitely an integer, one, two, four, eight, so forth, maybe because it wasn't an actual file and it was based off of the fill, which is not an integer, it wasn't able to run it correctly. So what I did for stream orders, I just ran everything through geoprocessing and it worked. So every step, the fill, flow direction, flow accumulation, con, stream link, and then stream order. I ran it all through geoprocessing, um, and then I ran stream feature. I'm gonna run a couple processes starting back with con to get us to where we need to be. Running con this time, I want the value to be greater than a million. Now let's run stream link again, and now we can use the raster function stream order. Let's put in our stream link, our flow direction, and we're going to use the order method staller, and let's create a new layer. So after running stream order, I got this raster, I turned the raster into a shape file using stream to feature, and then I applied my symbology, and I ended up with this. So once again, this isn't hydro condition, so it's not a great representation, but it did a pretty good job. So you have something like this. So at this point, there is one square kilometer of contributing area. That makes this an order one stream. This order one stream meets this order one stream and turns into an order two stream. Over here, you've got a square kilometer that contributes to this, square kilometer that contributes to this point, and it becomes an order two stream. You have the two order two streams come together and it becomes an order three stream. This is the Staller method used in Canada. Now, this also shows the limitations of using non hydro condition LIDAR. This stream follows this run and then it hits this road and it thinks that this is the lowest way out. Anyways, guys, that's how you run stream order. Just do everything through geoprocessing. I'll have all the steps in the description down below for both processes. Hope this made the hydrology a little bit more clear and easy to follow. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.